One of my favorite seasons is herring egg time. It's finally springtime after a long, cold, dark winter, and we're all excited for that first harvest of the year. It's always a special time that me and my family get to share with each other, and we go out and we scout every day, and the herring, they get closer to the shore, and the sea life move in, and it just adds to the buildup and the excitement of the harvest. Every day we go out in the boat and we look for signs of herring. We can tell they're coming closer because we can see signs of sea life moving closer and closer to the beach. The sea lions are out, the seals, king salmon start moving in and all the birds are waiting for the spawn. As soon as we see the first signs of spawn, which is the light colored water, we go back to the beach and we get our trees. The tree you choose is really important. We choose an adolescent hemlock because the needles lay flat versus an older tree. The needles tend to scatter in all directions. It creates a better environment for the herring to spawn. And we always try to pick a tree that's free of any witch's hair moss and any brown needles. My great grandma and my aunt taught my dad how to pick the best tree. and They made sure he knew not to pick a tree that was under any big pines because there'd be sap on it that would change the taste of the herring eggs. We find rocks on the beach to tie to the base of the tree and those act as anchors in the water. We also leave enough line so we can tie a buoy or sometimes we use a stick that we find on the beach to mark our trees. And once we find the right tree, we thank it because it's giving its life for us to be able to harvest our food for the spring. Usually at the beginning of the spawn, you have like two to three days before the herring stop. So you wanna set your trees right away at the first sign of spawn to ensure you get the thickest eggs on the branches. Usually we can predict the spawn each year by looking at the tides. So the herring usually spawn after the first big tide in April after it blows southeast. Once the trees are set, we let them soak in the spawn for as long as we can. So we usually let the trees soak two to three days or until the water starts to clear. When we're harvesting the tree, what we look for is the bright white glowing tree down in the water. You can see the branches flowing back and forth in the current. When you see that bright white, you know that there's a thick spawn on the branches and we all get super excited. And as we pull it up, we look for the thickness. And if the tree didn't do very well, which means it has a light spawn, will likely decide to leave it and just let the herring spawn off the branches and we'll wait for the other trees to see how they do. We cut off the limbs that we're going to keep and stack them on the back of the boat or in totes. We never take more than what we're going to use. So if we get one good tree, that's all we need for our family and to share with the community. It's always important to not take more than you're going to eat or use. The eggs that we don't harvest are left in the water so they can hatch. That way we ensure that the resource will always be there and that the herring will come back next year. While we're out harvesting our trees, we also look for blades of kelp that are sunk down in the water that look white because it has a thick layer of herring spawn on them. Some people prefer kelp and some people prefer branches, so we always try to harvest a mix of both to share. 
When you're setting your branches, you mentally note like where the best spawn was and you may not have set your branches there, but you can go back later and look for good kelp. It's really important to make sure that the next generation knows how to sustain themselves. When we were harvesting herring eggs this year, we asked my niece, why is it important to go out and get your own food, to catch your own food and put it in the freezer? And she looked at me and she said, to live. And that just summed it up. You know, she's seven years old and it's already instilled in her and she knows what to do. And each year she learns a little bit more. And each year I learn a little bit more. We never stop growing in that way. Being able to practice our culture and carry out our traditions together means so much to me. Through the wisdom of our elders, our tribal values are the compasses that guide everything we do. One of our values is generosity. It's important to take care of each other by sharing what we harvest. We share with elders, friends, and family. Harvest season is a beautiful time where we're able to enjoy being outside, working really hard, learning, and also teaching the next generation. We're so grateful to have access to fresh wild foods and love getting together and eating fresh fish eggs. Freezing the eggs in salt water is the main preservation method. They can also be dried or pickled. To cook them, we blanch both row on kelp and row on branches by dipping them in a pot of hot water until they're almost opaque in color. If they're cooked too long, they become white and rubbery. We eat them topped with seal oil or butter and dip them in a soy sauce or soy sauce vinegar mixture. One of my joys in life is being able to learn about harvesting from my dad and elders and pass that knowledge down to my niece and nephew and the next generation. It makes me smile to see how much they love native foods.